Pharaoh. And so it was. When Israel had sown, the Bible says, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Everything you put out there is coming back to you in one form or another. Everything you put out there is coming back your way in one form or another. The Bible said, you sow to the flesh, you sow to the spirit, you read life eternal. That's right. It said, verse 3, and so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come down unto God and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep didn't have no, anim no animals there, five. For they came up with their cattle and with their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. Both they and their cattle were without number, and they entered into the land, and they destroyed it. Fear can do the same thing to you. Deceit can do the same thing to you. Sin can destroy you. Sin will age you. Alcohol, drinking, drugs. It will age you. It will destroy you because sin is a house of bondage. It says in verse 6, and Israel was greatly, not just a little bit. Underline that your Bible is a work group. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel, they did what? They cried unto the Lord. And the Lord just let them suffer. He just let them go through it until they cried upon his name. He just let them suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. And some people, they're not getting their healing because they won't do what's right. They're not being free because they don't want to live for the Lord. On, so he leaves them in the house of bondage. They don't want to serve the true and the living God. They want to be a whore. So he leaves them in the house of bondage. <laughs> We just read about Harriet Tubman. It said during the day, whatever her hands could find to do, she did it. But all the while in her mind, she was thinking about, how can I help somebody else to be free? What can I do? Put the, the writer said that she would put her life at risk. But we hold our stuff. Come on, Come on. Man. Come on. We got five apples, and there's only two of us. We know our neighbor. We know our neighbor's husband just died. We got five apples, and there's only two of us, and we're throwing three apples away and still going down there to the lady who's now with her and helping her. Amen. We're in the house of bondage. Yes, you He said, by my love demonstrating you, they'll know you belong to me. It says, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. People not free today because they're not crying out. I mean, crying out to be free, to be new, to be different. Yes, Most people don't want to be free. Yep. They just want the appearance of freedom. Amen. Do you know some people could have woke up today not washed up or just put on fresh clothes? They had the appearance that they're fresh. Come on now. Amen. But they're not. They have the appearance that they are holy. They have the appearance that they are righteous, but they don't belong to God. Because if you belong to God, you speak the words of the Almighty God. Yes! And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. See, in order for them to cry unto the Lord, in order for them to cry unto the Lord, they had to understand why they were crying. They were crying because they made God cry. So he made them cry. If you make him cry, he's going to make you cry. You make this Holy Spirit cry because he's pulling on you and begging with you. He's going to make you cry. Yes. Amen. Then put you on the street called straight. And now you don't want to live right. Both your legs straighten out now. You ain't got to really depend on the other leg. Mm -hmm. He, he, he straightened out. He, he straightened out both your legs. Both, both your arms can move now. You couldn't do that before. You have no pain in your back. You don't have to sit propped up, but you can lay down and even roll over. But now you don't even have time for the one who healed you. Come on, you. tell it now, Reverend. You're in a house of bondage. Amen, Reverend. This is good. Yes, amen. amen. Sit in here. Yes. Sit in here. It says here in verse 8, 
that the Lord sent a prophet when he cried out unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and I brought you forth out of the house of bondage. I get that. So many times we forget. So many times we forget. John, the ninth chapter, the house of bondage. Come on, give God praise. Yes, John, the ninth chapter says, here's a fellow that was in the house of bondage. And Jesus passed by, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, not being able to see the same bondage. In most cases. Now there are some very godly people who are blind. Mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Jesus answered neither. Have this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest unto him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night coming when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So we right, found this right. man who was born blind. A house of bondage. For, for, for the Lord to come by to see about him. Now remember when we first started our lesson off, we talked about slavery. We talked about bondage. It talked about how slavery, slaves, most of them don't have no freedom. They got to do what the master tells them to do. And then we just read here, and judges about how the Lord told his children that he delivered them from Egypt, that he delivered them from the house of Pharaoh, that he delivered them from the house of bondage. When you are sick, that's a bondage. Some people who are sick, bless their little hearts, they got to wait for somebody to come by and look after them. This is a type of bondage. But it's a greater, it's a greater bondage even than that. It's a greater bondage even than that. Luke 13. It's a greater bondage even than that. And I want you to look at this bondage that I'm telling you about today. And that's why I'm giving you so many examples and you think of within your mind. Man, to be born blind. Or to have your sight and by some debilitating disease, you start losing your sight. To be up and walking around one day, and then the next day, you can no longer walk. But it's something greater than that. That's taking God's people over. Luke 13, let's read that. Let's start reading in verse number 11. It says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. She was in a house of bondage. Just think of your nose bleeding every day for 18 years. <clears throat> 18 years. Just think, if one day you were up walking and then the next, you had to wear a brace all the way up to your neck for 18 years. After the 18 years, you're going to be fat. But for 18 years, having known the liberation and the freedom of coming, coming and going as you will, and now you have to have somebody to wheel you around yeah, for 18 yeah. long Years. It's a house of bondage. It says 18 years and was bowed together. She was bent over and couldn't no wise do what? She couldn't lift herself. She couldn't help herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose. From thine infirmity, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she did what? She glorified God. Amen. But until that time, she was in a house of bondage. But it's something greater than that. Mark, the fifth chapter. Yes, praise the Lord. In Mark, the fifth chapter, starting in verse number one, it says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. This man is devil-possessed. Bound. 
down and as you go on and you read the story, you'll see how Jesus began to talk to the spirit before he could even talk to the man that was possessed. Go on, go on and read it. You'll see in the beginning of these scriptures here in Mark, the fifth chapter, Jesus is asking the demons, what is your name? And they plainly saying, we are legion, for we are men. That man was in the house of bondage. It was worse than just being in that cave. What was happening in his mind and in his soul was worse than what was happening to him in that, yes, in that yes, cave. Yes. He was in the house of bondage within himself. Amen. That's something to think about. You break your arm, they can make an incision or straighten it out where they can put a cast on it. Somebody comes and knock, knocks out your teeth. They they can do now where they can reconstruct bone in your mouth where your they can put teeth, graft, teeth stuff in your in your head. You have trouble with your uh female organs. They can do all kinds of stuff now. It, it's just amazing. But when it's in your mind, that's something. So, Reverend Thomas, what what could be what could be greater than being a slave? What could be greater than what could be greater than being bound over for 18 years? What could be greater than being down in the ground for four days? What could be what could be so the woman called an adoption? What could be worse than the leprous man? <coughs> the bondage of sin. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. The house is your building that you, all of y'all, you need containers. The house of bondage is your house you're carrying around right now with you. You can either live free from sin or live in a slavery of sin. The house of bondage. Remember we talked about those three women? They were kidnapped. But unlike sin, you give yourself over to it. That's it. Sin doesn't take you. You ask for it. You go on its ground. Amen. For James said that no man can say God is tempted, but he's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and entice. And then you become the house of bondage. The man that was in a tomb, he was cutting himself to be in sin is greater than that. The woman that was called in adultery and they were stolen home, sin is greater than that. Sin will aid you. Sin will cause you to go to an eternal damnation separated from your Lord. The house of bondage. Again, you can either live free from sin or you can live in a bondage of sin. Which way does the Bible endure, endorse? Certainly you know the answer. The devil, however, has caused man to take the holy scriptures of God, the voice of God, and to twist it in all kinds of falsehoods and deceive people, making people think that nobody can live free from sin. All religions going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven. The curse or the smoke or the whore, the cheater, the person that won't forgive. All, oh, everybody going to be in heaven. No, it's a bondage of sin. It's a house of bondage. Amen. And you won't make it to heaven. When I did my rotations when I was a chaplain, I seen this man once. He had uh, AIDS. He was down from AIDS. And when we walked into the room, when we were doing the rounds, I was standing there with the doctors, and the man's wife was there holding his precious son, and the man's body was stiff as a board. And the doctor told me that the reason why he was in that position was his will. He was dying, but his will was just, he was just holding on with everything. But he was going to die. But yet that man could have still made it into heaven. But you can't make it into heaven living in a house of bondage. Amen. You can't make it into heaven with one. You can't make it into heaven with one sin. And my purpose today was to see how you to, for you to see how degrading slavery is. To see how degrading it is to be under the power and the subjection of somebody else against your own will. But unlike this man here in the tombs. 
You go to sin. You got a choice. You can choose Christ or you can choose death. You can choose life or you can choose death. You can choose happiness or you can choose sorrow. You can choose to live or you can choose to die. The house of bondage is greater. It's greater. If you have ever seen anybody die with AIDS, to die with sin is greater than that. And I have a dear, I have a dear family member now who's really fighting cancer. And I believe at first they, she had cancer on one breast and then she went back, she had a double mastectomy. Took her breast. Then something was going on with her pancreas. They took her pancreas. And now they're talking about taking portions of her liver. Just cutting away. But Santa cut you out. She can still make it to heaven. Come on, yes. Come on. But no sin's going to ever enter heaven. And I want you to see how grotesque sin is. How it changes you. How it causes you to how it causes you to act like an animal. How it causes you to treat people. Yeah. How foul it is. Yeah, that's right. How it can stick to you like tar. Because some of you love sin. You love that false power that the devil gives you. But he's killing you. Amen. He's killing you. We can't study the spirit of man without studying eternal security. We need to know everything about it. Is salvation conditional or unconditional? Unconditional eternity security declares that it is unconditional. Once saved, always saved. Once in grace, always in grace. But in Eden... In Eden, however, you find a man and a woman in the image of God. They were cast out. Although with one exception, they had previously lived in perfect grace, in perfect love, in perfect peace, in perfect everything. Amen. You know when you have diabetes and you don't take care of yourself, the smallest little cut could put you in danger. You can lose a lamb, you can lose your sight if you're not careful. But sin is greater than that. Yeah. It's greater than that. And during breast cancer awareness, they show pictures of women with the courage to show viewers what cancer has done to them. They show you pictures of where that, that breast was removed for you to see how nothing is there. But sin is worse than that. Samson was down in the dungeon. His ass had been burnt out. The sin is worse than that. We read a story not long ago about how the devil gave this one lady wisdom and knowledge of how to cut the baby out, to take the baby out with the mom dad. Sin is more grotesque than that. The lepers. We read about it. We know the history of lepers. They had to stand outside the gate. They had to have a bell around them to alarm people. They had to scream out, lepers, lepers. Sin is worse than that. Amen. They have some STDs now. They smell so foul. They can make you sterile, but you cannot have a baby. They have some STDs. There are no cure. But sin is greater than that. It will separate you from your Savior. Forever yes. and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's the house of bondage. Adam and Eve. Yes, praise the Lord. Think about this, and that's why I was telling you those things about slavery. I want you to get that picture in your mind. And then I want you to think about when you curse, when you won't forgive, Come on now. when you arbor ill will in your heart. Smoking and drinking, doing drugs, going to cave, sleeping with somebody you don't even know anything about. You sleeping with all the people that person slept with. But yet sin is greater than that. Amen. Adam and Eve were wonderfully made. Their bodies were completely healthy. They were to have lived forever just like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Without one speck of hate or disobedience, without tears, without sorrows or heartaches. But when man sinned, he found that his eternal life in paradise was conditional. 
the Lord in fact had let Adam and Eve know in the beginning that Genesis 2, 16 and 17, of every tree of the garden, thou may freely eat. God give us liberties. You know, some young people need to get married early. We don't want them to get married too early, but I don't want them to die on the hill either. Come on, Reverend, teach us. So one young man used to come to our church, and I told him, I said, son, your whole problem is you need to get married. You need to have your wife. You need your companion. And that will cut out most of the problem that you are having in life. Mm -hmm. Most young people, you would think that they just invented sex in this generation, right. but it's been around for a long time. You need a companion, some, you know, some of these young people. You don't need to keep going to these bars and going to these lounges. Find you a companion in the church. That way it won't be no division at home. Find you a companion. Yes. 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 Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Had Adam and Eve stayed away from the tree of death and eat, they would have never been sick. They would have never had to earn their food by the sweat of their brow. They would have never seen a dead one, a uh, loved one die, never been separated from those they loved. No, they were beautiful in every way, so pure in their thinking and actions that God would come down daily to walk with them. As much as the family in heaven is a part of God, they were a part of God's family. And were on their way to living forever in the grace of God. When you are given salvation, you are given eternal life in the grace of God. But it's based on condition. There's no such thing, neighbor, as once saved, always saved. We read so many wonderful examples today about those three young ladies. Remember the three young ladies that we talked about in the beginning? They're free today. Some of them might be doing better than others. Mm -hmm. But they're all free. I believe they demolished the house where they were where they were captives at. I believe so many people swarmed around them and just gave them love and support. But when you die in sin, you don't get anything. You lose everything. You lose everything. You lose everything when you die in sin. When you die with deceit in your heart, when you die with lies in your heart, when you die with unforgiveness in your heart, when you die shacked up, when you die married and you want free, you lose everything. Your life is a waste. Amen. I want my life to count for something. Yes. I want God to be glad that he spared my life. I want him to be glad that his son shed his blood for me. Yes, yes. I want God to be glad when he looked down upon this ministry to see that there's a few people still having faith. You haven't given up to the gospel. You haven't given up to the influence of the world church. You might as well praise the Lord.
My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 10, 27, verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. People are so deceived today that dipping into God's word and taking out only what they want. The devil uses part of the word to blind them to what God is really saying. It, it, it's so sad. He makes people think he's dipping from God's well, but he isn't dipping from that well because there's no deceit in the well called the Bible. Throughout hundreds of years of dipping in the word of God, the, the water has always been and will always be pure. It's just something for us to think about today. We need to stay with God, everybody. It don't matter what you have to do. It don't matter who you have to leave. It don't matter what you have to do. You have got to stay with God. John 8, 42 and 43, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. Mm -hmm. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Even because you cannot hear my word. You can't hear the word unless you want truth. The word was made flesh, and the word was speaking. Some people think they can dip in and out of God's word, but not so. Jesus told his accuser just who their father was. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and both not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. John 8, 44. And if you commit sin, the devil is your father. That's something to think about. That's something to think about. Verse 45, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, hear it, God's word. Now, what else can we say about that? He that is of God, hear it, God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. That's just something. First John 3 and 8, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God bless your hearts on today. The house of bondage. The house of sin. Why well, live your whole life and die lost? Come on now. Why well, live your whole and then in gallows. Never remember by your God. Never remember by the angels of heaven. Why live your whole life? And that lost. Neighbor, I hope you were blessed today. The house of bondage. Spend some time this week praying, talking to the Lord. Those articles, you can just look them right up on the internet that I share with you today. Stay with God, man. Stay with God. And no matter what you are going through, remember I love you, I love you, God bless you, and I'll see you next time.